So I've had a lot of requests from people asking me how to use different mediums and stencils on their projects. Today I'm just going to show you examples using five different mediums, modeling paste to gessos, embossing paste as well as Primas texture paste white crackle. These are the ones that I use the most. Um, I'm going to be using a small thin stencil otherwise the pieces that we're going to do will be too big and you'll be here till next week. I have cut five strips of white cardstock, smooth white cardstock um, into equal lengths and widths and I've written at the back of each piece which medium should go away so that I don't get confused because that happens quite easily. Um, of course you're going to need a tool to apply the medium with. I prefer to use a flat spatula, a metal one and then of course it's nice to make sure that your stencil is bigger than the area when you're a beginner so that you don't mess up your area. Ladies, practice, practice, practice. Okay, first of all, I'm going to be placing my stencil over my paper that I want to cover. I work on a craft sheet, on a Teflon craft sheet for this. It cleans really easily. I'm also using an old cloth that I'm going to wet slightly. It's not dripping wet, otherwise you will be making a big mess that each time after I've used a different medium, I can just wipe it off with. Um, so let's see what's inside this jar. I, will, I did this with each jar. Um, you can see it's nice and thick, which means it's not gonna be runny and get all over your project. That is a good indication of whether you'll be making a big mess or a small mess if you're using mediums. Something that's really runny will just make a big mess. Okay, so you can see I am holding my spatula so that it's almost parallel and flat onto my stencil and I'm just spreading the medium over the stencil to get a smooth consistency. If you want lots of texture, you can now go and tap, 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 but let's leave that until you're an expert. Okay, I'm holding it close so that you can actually see the texture. It is just very smooth when it is wet. When it's dry, the crackle will be revealed. I'm closing my jar and now I'm taking my damp cloth and I am just wiping everything that I used. You can see how easily that is to clean up. So there really isn't much of a mess. Oh, that's not a very good Sharpie marker I marked my <laughs> stencil with because look, it just comes off. Um, and you can see that my... I cut myself off there. My surface is clean. <laughs> Hi guys. Okay, so um, remember earlier I made all these little samples with five different mediums. Sorry, those are my puppies eating in the background and I'm going to do some live voicing now. So I'm not going to do the voiceover. Um, it's just easier. I'm going to go through them in the same order that I did them. I hope I can remember which one I did first. I think I did the crackle first. Um, after that, I'm fairly sure I did the two gessos, I hope. Acrylic gesso and heavy gesso. And then I think I did the modeling paste and I hope I did the embossing paste last. If I'm wrong, forgive me, then I'll just go back and look on the video, but it doesn't really matter because I've got it written at the back. Now the white crackle texture paste obviously now has a crackle. Um, sometimes I've got to hold it still so that the camera can focus. I hope you can see that beautiful crackle. I really love this product. Um, of course you can mix this product with an ink before you apply it so that it's not white. But I just worked with all these mediums in their natural state. Next up I think we had the Couture Creations Acrylic Gesso. It's a thin gesso. Um, in my opinion it's perfect for scrapbooking because it's really lightweight and it dries quickly. As we all know paper is not meant to get wet, doesn't like heat either. So when you work on paper in traditional scrapbooking you want to work with a gesso um, that dries quickly, that doesn't cover everything. You want to work with a heavy gesso when you're doing mixed media and you literally want to cover everything on a page. Um, you can see how thin this gesso is and how it dried, but it still gave a little bit of a texture. Next up, we had the Prima Heavy Gesso. 
This gives a stunning effect, but when I hold it next to the light gesso, you can actually see the contrast. Okay, so of course you would get much better coverage using the heavy gesso than the light gesso, but it all depends what you want. Sorry, my nails are not dirty, it's just ink and stuff underneath, and I haven't had a time, had a chance to scrub my hands yet. Next up we have the modeling paste. You can see compared to all the other pastes, if I hold it here, all the other mediums that we used, it actually has a grayish undertone. Now all texture pastes, regular smooth ones, normally has a gray undertone. What makes the modeling paste from Finnevar so remarkable is that it is a very lightweight paste. Oh, sorry, there goes the phone too. I wanted to still switch that off. Um, but it does have a gray undertone. It is a matte product, so it doesn't have a shine to it. And you can color it before you apply it, or you can color it after you've applied it. Lastly, we have the embossing paste. The embossing paste is very lightweight. You can see it's got a white finish and it gives a fantastic texture. Next up, I'm going to be cutting these into four different equal parts and then we will use four different ways of coloring all these pieces of paper. Please remember, there are a million things you can do with these products. This is like a 101. It's not for experienced people. Um, it's for the poor person out there who has just tried this and is extremely frustrated because they don't know which medium does what and then they get all of this white yuck all over their place. It's on the floor, it's on the spatula, it's on the cutting mat, it's everywhere. So as I explained in the previous video, when you work with these mediums, you need to be in an area that you don't have too much of your stuff around, not like me. You can see I have everything around me, but I'm hopefully only going to concentrate on my craft sheet. Um, and I'm not that particular, so if I do accidentally get some paste somewhere, I'll just let it be. Okay, um, so I'll be right back with these cut into pieces and then I'll introduce you to the coloring mediums we are going to be going to use. Just listen quickly. Just because I'm going to be using an all-purpose ink doesn't mean that you can't use liquid watercolor or that you can't use really cheap acrylic paint. Use what you have and see what happens. That is so important. You guys, you can do it. Don't be scared. It's just ink, it's just paste, and it's just paper. Um, we put too much pressure on ourselves, we should just be enjoying this, we should be embracing the imperfection and we should just allow ourselves to have fun. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have cut my five different medium samples into four smaller pieces and I'm going to use green inks just because I could find four different green inks quick enough. Hi guys, okay, so once I've dried my base that I've applied or my medium, I'm now going to be applying the four inks that I said I was going to use to each piece individually. Um, in other words, I'll have modeling paste, one colored with all purpose, one colored with twinklings, one colored with um, dye ink and one colored with a color bloom mist and then of course the thin gesso, the thick heavy gesso, um, the crackle paste and the embossing paste. But I'm just going to show one sample um, because otherwise we'll be here till tomorrow watching <laughs> and that will be really boring. First of all um, I'm going to be misting with the Prima Color Blue Mist. You always have to shake this up really well and there you can hear the little ball inside stainless steel ball starting to mix the pigment. Um, I like to use my splatter box for this. Um, we sell them at the shop. Just hold on a second before I break everything. Let me just grab it. So I'm just going to put it here to one side and then I am simply putting my sample in there and I am going to give it a mist remove the little nozzle protector thingy and I'm just misting. Okay, you can see that there on a side view. So I'm putting that away, that can stay there and dry 
Next off, I'm going to be using a finger dauber. You can use a blending tool and uh, with my dye ink. So I'm really just putting my little finger dauber, dabbing it into the ink and I am just blending over my stenciled area. You can apply as much or as little ink as you want. I just want to get some good coverage so that we can test this after everything has dried and of course all these elements will be dry except the um, the color blue mist. Next I'm going to be using my all-purpose ink. What I'm going to do with this I am actually going to be wetting my paper first. I'm just giving it like three squirts and then I'm just picking up a little drop. It can be really minute and I'm squirting it onto my piece of paper. You can of course wet that again to get the ink moving. That is entirely up to you. There are millions of other ways to do this. That is just the technique I've chosen for today. Um, just be careful when you do this. I now know that I've got some green ink onto my pretty shirt that I'm wearing today but that's okay. Just add some character. Lastly I'm going to be using Twinkling H2O's and I'm using a Fantastics tool for this. You can use whatever you want to. Um, I'm just wetting it slightly. I've already prepared this. Twinkling H2O's are rock hard gorgeous artist quality little pigments um, and you have to activate them by wetting them and leaving the ink there for a while, the water in there for a while to just activate. Um, I'm not too concerned at this stage about getting some of the shimmer pigment. I just want to see how it reacts onto my base that I've created with my pastes and mediums. So you can see I'm just spreading it, coloring it and let's wait for this to dry and then I'll be back to show you guys the results. And here's my color bloom piece and I'm actually not going to use a heat gun. I'm going to let that dry naturally. But of course you can use a heat gun to dry this all. I'll be back when it's dry. I, sorry, I just have to say one more thing. Please don't judge any colors of anything you have colored until it is dry. Um, the true color will only be revealed and the true technique effect will only come forward once it is dry. So please don't think you need to add more color and more color. Just judge it once it is dry to see if you want to add more color. We can always add more color. It's really hard to take up why any color. Okay, bye. Hi guys. Okay, so here are all my little samples. They are nice and dry and I'm going to show you each and every single one of them what the results are. Okay, so first off we used the color bloom. We just misted it. Um, there's the heavy gesso. You can see that it is actually still wet on the gesso when I rub that and I actually left this overnight quite fascinating but see what happens the moment I take a damp cloth and I wipe the gesso actually acts as a stunning resist okay I think that is fantastic um, I will definitely use that in a project. Let's see what the lightweight gesso does. Oh, also acts as a resist. In other words, you can use gesso as a resist when you do a technique. So if I'm going to use it and spread it with my stencil and I'm then going to color the area around it, that will just simply rub off. That's using a Prima Color Bloom. Now let's see what happens if I, same thing, on the Prima Crackle texture paste. Let's see what happens on modeling paste. Hmm, okay. So on modeling paste, it actually accepts the color. Although it does become a little lighter when I wipe it off, it doesn't completely become white. And on embossing paste, you can see that it definitely was colored. Okay, so Gesso Crackle Texture Paste, the Prima one, the white one, and the light gesso 
that all acts as a resist. Let's move on to the next ink we use. Next up, we used all purpose ink. Now, I just want to mention that of course you don't have to rub your things like I just did. I'm interested in resist techniques and all the different things that inks and mediums can do. So of course I'm going to do that. Here you can see how beautifully the all-purpose ink dried. So if you just were to drop it, remember how I did that? I wet this little sample and then I just drop the ink in there. It really gives a beautiful effect. Um, for those of you who now want to see what happens when I wipe it, can't find the wet spot there okay um, it is permanent so it shouldn't rub off so you can see if you use an all-purpose ink you're kind of guaranteed that your ink will stay <laughs> where you put it um, obviously the color bloom is not permanent when heat set or when left to dry so you can see that's why it resisted next up we have the twinkling Twinkling is just a watercolor paint, an artist quality one. You can see that it definitely did colorize my heavy gesso, but I can still wipe it to get some of that gorgeous gesso revealed. Um, a little less so with the light gesso, and I'll talk about gesso just now. Then let's move on to the crackle. Crackle, once again, it really accepted the color. Modeling paste, that is definitely colored and then embossing paste that is also colored oh no that actually rubs off nicely okay so with modeling paste i would say if you're going to use twinklings that accepts color the best out of all the, the options we've had so far i think modeling paste coloring it when it's dry definitely gives you the best results but the last one um here we're going to use the i use the dye ink the little memento you can see that it also resists nicely, although it does have slight coloration on the light gesso. That's also nicely colored. Very light, but nicely. And there we go, the crackle. You can see it resisted, but it's still a lighter shade. Let's go to the modeling paste. Modeling paste, once again, really accepted the color nicely. And then, of course, the embossing paste also accepted the color nicely. It does come off a little bit but not so much so there you have it that was just a really quick um overview of these five different mediums and coloring them with four different inks before i go i would like to say something about gesso gesso is an italian word that means chalk okay so chalk is the base of course for chalk paint and it gives a chalky finish and they actually prepare all canvases with gesso gesso prepares anything to accept mediums so if i want to um paint something like my fridge a very good idea would be to actually um, cover your fridge in gesso <laughs> okay? because then you can mix it with all kinds of inks and give it some coloring um, there's a fantastic technique where we actually cover wood or any cardboard with gesso we sand off the first dry layer and then we cover it with heavy gesso again then we sand off the next layer now I have done this a few times it's very tedious but it is really worth it after about the 10th time that you've sanded it with extremely fine sanding paper you get the most amazing stamp background um, this surface for stamping is for you guys who love stamping is simply amazing I really want to recommend that you give it a try um, obviously heavy gesso works much better and you have to wait for the layers to dry in between maybe one day when I'm feeling adventurous I will do a sample on that so for those of you who are worried about applying mediums to your pages just another tip start small practice don't go take a double page and now think you're going to go stenciling all over. Be prepared to make a little bit of a mess. Using mediums is a messy affair. It is not <laughs> clean line scrapping. Um, 
but you can keep it contained you don't have to be all over the place but just practice and get yourself a nice big craft sheet I think this craft sheet that I have here is about 60 centimeters wide so a double page should fit nicely nicely onto it but I also recommend that you do one left side first and then the right side but I will do some more videos using that there is a little video that I did um, where I actually did apply the pastes directly to my page I think it's the lady pattern blue layout um, I use 3d Prima Finabar Medium on that it's fantastic uh, it's a fantastic product just go have a look and you can see that you really need to let go of everything it has to be so perfect when you use these mediums um, it's supposed to just be fun I hope this helped someone um, and if it didn't at least now you can see what what all these greens look like <laughs> have a nice day you guys and see you next time